What do you really want to do with your life? Have you thought about it? And you know, when we say, have you thought about it? You know what you're doing is you're visualizing. So in this episode of the Dream Job Radio, let's talk about visualization. Hi, do you want to do what you want? Do you want better money? Welcome to Dream Job Radio. Hi, this is Daniel Laxton's and you're listening to the Dream Job Radio Show. Now, in this episode, I want to talk about visualization. It is key to whether you're trying to find a job or if you're trying to find maybe a mate, if you're trying to uh, decide on what to buy, what house you want to buy, what kind of car you want to drive. All these things, before we actually do those things, we're always visualizing. And then what are we doing while we're visualizing? We're actually analyzing how we feel within the visualization. So visualization is key. What do you want to do with your life? That's the thing to ask. What's really interesting is if you talk to someone that's maybe in their early teens, they may actually tell you, oh, I want to be a farmer, or I want to be a doctor, or I want to be a fireman, a police officer. But they have strong convictions on what they want to be. It's only later on in high school that we're really starting to wonder, what do I want to be when I grow up? And what's interesting is if you fast forward into mid-20s or to 30s, people are in specific jobs, but after they explored those jobs, they started to realize that maybe this isn't exactly what I wanted. Even in high school, different times we'll be taking a class and a subject. But once we get deep into that subject, we then realize that maybe that's just not me. And the reason why is because when we visualize, we're visualizing with the knowledge that we have at that time. And it takes time to learn. It takes time to explore. And guess what? You don't have to beat yourself up because you made choices of exploration into certain things. As a matter of fact, usually when you look back at your path, that the path that you took to get to where you are right now, it actually was beneficial for you. You've learned so much along the way. And you did have interests in those things that you did. Otherwise, you wouldn't have chose those paths. But what's happened is the further along we get, down the path, the more knowledge we gain. And then when we compare our feelings to this new knowledge, we may say that, you know what, that's not as much me. I mean, there's a little bit of me in that, but that's not as much me. And so then we change course. It's kind of like being on a a sailing ship and it's your ship and you're trying to sail to this destination. A lot of times the destination is wealth or uh, success. and But, but you know, uh, kind of everything in your life, everything that we do in life is going to be wealth and success. Uh, wealth or abundance is something that we all, you know, we want. We want to have plenty so we can share it with others. But when you're on your ship and you're sailing, there's things that are going to knock your ship off course. The wind blows in a different direction. Maybe the waves feel like they're against you. And that's normal. Just what do you do when you're in that situation? Well, just readjust your sails and then focus on your goal. What is your destination? But what if your goal, when you get there, it's not exactly what you wanted? That's okay. It's just like being on a ship. It's fun island hopping to different places, isn't it? So you get to one island. Well, maybe it's not exactly the island you wanted, but guess what? It's awesome. You did that. You got to that destination and now you discovered that, you know what? This is great, but it's not exactly me. So if you look into people's lives that are in their forties or even their fifties or even into their sixties, there's different times in our life that we may say that, you know what? I've been doing this for this many years, but I'm ready for a change and I'm ready to try something new. I'm ready to reinvent myself. So no matter how old we are to, to, to you watching the show right now or listening to the show, it, it things change in life. And the last thing you want to do is beat yourself up saying that, oh, I wasted all this time because you didn't waste the time. 
you were exploring and learning. In life, you're going to have to make a decision on this or that. And all these decisions that are put before us, we may not have specific knowledge in each of those decisions. And that's okay. Who can? But not to take the magic out of it, but you know, a scientist, when they are experimenting to find a result, they don't know what the result's going to be. They're just making an experiment. You know, they take two things and they see how this one reacts to the experiment and how that one reacts. Now, if there's a failure in the experiment, do they take it personally as a scientist? No, because they're just discovering what happens during the experiment. And think about your life as an experiment. But we're always trained from childhood to beat ourselves up if the result that we were hoping to have doesn't turn out. But that's silly. I mean, I've done it too, so you're not alone. But the point is, is we can't possibly know. There's too much information. Could you imagine saying that, you know, you're listening to something and uh, it was written in one of over 2000 languages on the planet. And so... It's like you misunderstood the message because it's written in a language you've never heard of before. But would you beat yourself up saying, man, I just should have known that language? Well, you can't learn over 2,000 languages on the planet. Well, maybe somebody could. But the point is, is most people can't. You can't learn everything. There's only a finite amount of time that we were alive on planet Earth. And during this time, we need to reduce beating ourselves up over just choosing one of these two choices before us. And if we get a great result, that's great. If we get a bad result, oh, we're unlucky. No, you're not unlucky. (laughs) The, The results of the experiment have nothing to do with you. It's just that you discovered that this is not for you and this one is for you. So it just takes time and it's not that big of a deal. And it's fun along the way. So when you, whatever you're trying to become, it's a lot of fun along the way if we look at it that way. So life is this way. Uh, and a lot of us are just going around saying, I still haven't become that person. You know, I want to be a rock star. You know, that's, that's my dream job. I want to be a rock star. And you know what? Whether you succeed in being a rock star or if you didn't, did you enjoy the times that you were on the stage playing the guitar, playing the drums or singing? Did you enjoy that time period? You see, no one can take that from you. You are successful. Now, if you want to be a rock star, you have to continue on. You know, most people say in the music industry, and I actually was a band manager at one time years ago, but what you discover is a lot of people that are in bands, they, most of them don't get discovered at a young age. They've been doing this work for maybe 12 years. They started maybe when they're in their teens, but it's usually in their 30s, sometimes mid 30s before they finally get recognized. So, and it's the same thing. Say if you're an entrepreneur and you started a YouTube channel, then it takes time. Usually it takes up to three years before it starts getting traction. But are you in it for the long haul? Do you have to, do we have to have instant gratification? No, we don't. The thing is, is we have to enjoy things along the way. Take time. Be kind to yourself. Now, yes, be firm and strong and, you know, do do your regimens. When you get up in the morning, make your bed, you know, do things that make you feel proud of yourself. Yeah. Pride's okay. You know, there's a, there's a balance between all of these things but you have to like yourself. Well, you're conceited. No, there's a balance in all of these things. On your journey uh, to becoming who you are, to living your dreams, then it, it can be fun or we can beat ourselves up all the way. And so how, which would you rather? Because you're going to get to your destination eventually. But do you want to look back and say that, man, I had a miserable time because of my attitude towards myself. And the reason why that attitude towards yourself was so bad was because you were blaming yourself for just making a simple decision. Now, let's get into talking more about visualization. I hope that as I was talking, you were visualizing all these things. But the thing is, is whatever you choose to do with your life, 
It's all about that visualization and the feelings that you have towards that. So in my book, The 30 Careers Before 30, Finding Your Dream Job Faster Than I Did, I actually talk about that in one of the chapters where just sit down and, you know, I, I used to say, go through the phone book. Of course, I don't know, do we even have phone books nowadays, but uh, there is a website and I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's a government website that has every possible job, job description, actually how much money uh, you can make at that job on the average. And I'll leave it in the description down below. The website's okay. actually called uh, and this is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, but uh, the website's called the Occupational Outlook Handbook. And you can find it at www.bls.gov forward slash O-O-H for Operational Outlook Handbook. Down below. Uh, but the thing is, is it's amazing. You can actually sit there on the website and look at each of those uh, jobs and then sit back and visualize, visualize what it would be to be doing that job. And then you have to explore as a scientist, go and find a small company out there that, you know, is doing this sort of thing. And then go and talk to a hiring manager, talk to someone in person before you give your uh, application. If it's too big of a company, I mean, you can still succeed in that, but then you have a lot of competition. If you find a small family type of business, maybe with only 30 employees or maybe 60 or whatever, somewhere it's a, a smaller amount of employees, then you can actually even talk to the owners. Uh, you can talk to the hiring manager. You can tell them about what your passions are and it, they will see your value and they'll hire you on the spot. Even if if they like you, even if they don't have a position open, I have seen people to hire someone because they saw that spark and they wanted them. So that might be a, an excellent way for you to explore. Now, when you go and work for that person and then you start doing some of those uh, tasks, you may find that you love this, that this is your passion, or you may find that it's not. Well, that's okay. Because if, if it's not your passion, then at least now you know, you don't beat yourself up for making a bad decision. You don't blame God or the universe. Um, you actually just say that, wow, I'm so grateful that I discovered whether this works or not. And then you move on. This is the way relationships are. It's everything. It all goes back to first your imagination and then exploration. Oh, by the way, yes, I got a beach behind me. I'm not at the beach. I just wanted you, uh, I'm doing the show since I didn't have a guest this week. I just wanted you to, to feel like, hey, I, you know, visualize, visualize. I'm in paradise. There's an ocean behind me. I like this. Got some wind blowing the trees over here, you know? So visualization. Uh, can you imagine what things would be like? And, you know, visualization also runs right into the study of the law of attraction. So if you're a law of attraction type of person, then you're, you're already probably doing this. But what I want to encourage you is to do visualization more. When we're a child, our, our imagination is just amazing. The older we get, we may not have that youthful imagination, but we have to keep working on that imagination. Keep it strong. Keep it just like working out, doing your exercise. But the truth is, is if you think you don't have a good imagination, think again, because everything that we see, talk about here, our mind is working in the background and we're visualizing pictures of the things that someone's talking about. Just because maybe in your, in your mind, you don't think it's like a vivid picture. I get that too. But the truth is, is they're more vivid than we realize consciously. So keep working at your visualizations and may you draw into reality the things that you truly wish, your heart's desire. So I wish you well and thanks for listening to the Dream Job Radio. Oh, and also if you love Law of Attraction, be sure to check out my TikTok. I don't know if you got a TikTok. I didn't until about a little towards the end of last year. Uh, I, I heard some news that uh, it was a much safer platform. You know, originally uh, the uh, military wouldn't allow 
the soldiers to use TikTok because they said there was a danger or something. But um, they, they I, either someone told me they lifted it or something. But I went ahead and, and jumped on there because it's easy to make a, a 10 minute, 10 second to three minute video. It's easier than sitting down and doing these uh, videos for you on YouTube or doing a podcast. And so I have it. I usually release three videos a day on techniques and tips on law of attraction. So you might check that out there. It's uh, Daniel Laxton's D-A-N-I-E-L-L-A-K-S-T-I-N-S. And uh, check it out on TikTok and let me know what you think and say hello, leave a comment on one of the videos and also leave a comment here. So I'm going to continue to grow. So my dream job (laughs) is to always be on stage, always be inspiring people to become the best version of themselves. One of the projects that I'm working on right now is the ultimate reality surfing program last year i built a third of it and so it's still not done i saw the roofing business builder platform program is is going um i've got seven uh, of my clients in there and that's great but uh, i love law of attraction i love teaching higher levels of law of attraction so my passion and my visualizations is is being able to have um, small conventions where people like you and, and i are out there inspiring people to become the best version of themselves that's always been my goal that's re- the reason why i wrote the book uh, 30 careers before 30 finding your dream job faster than i did so give back to society as you help others it's going to inspire you and get you excited to do more and become more of who you are keep visualizing and until next week or until the next episode, I'll see you on the Dream Job Radio.